And we're live. Look, and we're live. Guys, let me know if you can hear me loud and clear. I'm your boy, The Kempire, and we are live for an... I don't breaking news. I don't know. Look, we were just live talking about the Real Housewives of Potomac Robin Dixon situation. I saw this. All of you tagged me in this. Our friends over at Giorgio Says had this exclusive phone interview with the Juan Dixon mistress that was addressed on Watch What Happens Live yesterday. So we have to talk about that. We have to talk about um, what she says in there. But we also have to just recap what Robin Dixon said on Watch What Happens Live so you understand what exactly the mistress is responding to. So let's get into that first. But be before we do any of that, be sure to like the video, be sure to let me know where you're watching from, and be sure to subscribe because it is a subscribers only live chat. And at the end, you will have an opportunity to call in and share your thoughts on the interview and everything. <laughs> Auntie says, is it town hall time? Nope, I didn't put, my, I didn't put on the gown. I didn't put on the gown. <laughs> so it's that's town hall time. Let's get into it. Baby, baby, won't you listen to me? I got that flavor. I know you're dying to feed. I ain't no dancer. Just got some hip in my feet. Now throw your hands up. Ooh, you bring the lighter. I got the fuse. You make a fire. I'll add the fuel. Follow my lead. Just watch the shoes. Robin Dixon, I know you probably think I like talking about you, but honestly, at this point, I don't want to talk yeah, about Robin yeah, Dixon yeah, anymore. Yeah. <sighs> but here we are. So we were just live only, how long ago was that? Maybe a, little, like a couple of hours ago, talking about the, the season finale for The Real Housewives of Potomac. But as you know, on Watch What Happens Live last night, Robin Dixon had an interview. Well, she was supposed to be there anyway to promote RHOP. But, of course, the news broke in between time where we found out about this relationship, allegedly, with Juan Dixon and this woman from Canada. She did a podcast talking about how she knew about this before filming. She was just waiting for someone to mention it. And then she told us, those of you listening to the podcast, well, I will tell you why, what the, what, what was the history behind this receipt? What, what is the story behind this receipt, this hotel receipt? And we weren't going to pay for that. Nope, 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 nope. But all of you that did and reported back, we appreciate you guys. We do appreciate you guys. <clears throat> so we found out in that Patreon behind that paywall about about the receipt. And she claims that the receipt was Juan went to the hotel to pay for the for, for her hotel because she had went to, um, where did she go? She went to the casino and then she had lost her wallet and that's why his name is on the receipt. And she ended up sleeping with his friend. I, I've left some things out of there, but but, but you, you've been following the story. If you want a full recap, watch all the videos that we've done covering the story. Well, as you know, on Watch What Happens Live, she explains more. And I say explains in quotes, because a lot of you say, you are saying nothing here. We do not believe you. You really believe what Juan Dixon told you? <clears throat> Let's just, let me just remind you of what she said. Let me just remind you. Hold on, y'all. Because y'all know I'm producing and hosting and engineering all the all the things so let's get into what robin told andy last night in regards to the story behind juan dixon's relationship with this woman from canada allegedly <laughs> she lives in canada 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 was clearly on a strict lockdown um during the pandemic okay so the hotel receipt comes into play because for whatever reason she decided that she wanted to fly to maryland um, and she had told Juan that she was dating a Baltimore Ravens player. 
So she's telling him she's flying to Maryland, and he's like, okay, whatever. Um, but somewhere along the way, she, she gets to Maryland. She's reaching out to him. She tells him she lost her wallet in the casino, and she cannot pay for her hotel room. Okay. So he feels bad for her. Um, apparently, she was, like, you know, really stressed out, really distraught. He feels bad for her. He goes to the hotel, puts his cart down at the, at the counter or whatever, and that's it. So... Okay, so they ne so that was the only time they met in person. Yes, and I guess it this could sound like BS to a lot. It of It sounds no, it sounded like BS to me. Okay, honestly, like when when I found out about it, it sounded but like still BS married to him. me. But he was very, you know, he he was. You being, believe him? I believe him. Just and and also based on like what she revealed last week. Okay, I believe him. Here's my thing. You're on a reality show about your life. Yeah. And infidelity has been the hot topic of the season. And you've played a part in the conversations. Mm -hmm. So how, how do you stay silent through the season? I just, because it was so, we already, it was so in the back of my mind, like, we dealt with it. We moved on from it. it. Like I don't know why I would say, "Hey guys, pick me. Let's talk about let's talk well, about my you're, issues." You're, the expectation is that you're sharing everything that's going on in your life. Right. So that's why it's not about pick me, wait to be picked. It's hey, we went through something, and this is what's happening in our lives. But it wasn't an issue at that moment while we were filming. If it was an issue but while it, it we were had filming, been an issue in your relationship because it wasn't relevant to where we were in that present time. Another big criticism is you withhold you withhold the truth on the reality show that you're on, but then you sell it behind a paywall. <laughs> well, I talked about it on the free podcast. Okay. Right? And then you said And I didn't withhold I didn't <laughs> it's not about withholding information. It was because this information was given light last week or the week before. On that's a, why you on brought it lie. up now. Yeah. Okay. And because the lie, like the, the lie. I think that's that the, called withholding information. Well, Attorney uh, Williams? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm about the, the paper. So I'm here for the paywall. Okay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I'm thank a you. podcaster as well. I'm Andy. It. So okay. we got the bag. Okay. And, and, okay. and my problem was right. the, the, okay. the female was telling <laughs> lies and trying to, like, you know, expose us. She was telling lies. Lies. So the lies. Was, I needed to correct. <laughs> she needed to correct what? Oh, Robin, 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 Robin. Hold on, y'all. I'm having a little... I want to be able to hear everything properly. But you guys heard everything that Robin said on Watch What Happens Live last night, right? All right. Hold on one second. Let me just switch these out. Because this is live. And this is a last-minute live that we're doing. So, you know, all my technical stuff, I'm trying to figure those things out right now. <clears throat> So that was Robin Dixon on Watch What Happens Live last night. And I posted this on social media and a lot of you had reactions. And you were like, this BS. Even if you were a Robin Dixon fan, you were like, this is some BS. Robin, you are regurgitating these lies that, that Juan Dixon told you. Lies. The lies. <laughs> and it doesn't make sense to us. But... As you know, the mistress, I'm referring to her as the mistress, but I don't know if she would refer to herself as a mistress. She did an exclusive interview with our friends over at Giorgio Says. Per usual, we will be citing our sources in the description of this video so you can see the full interview and things that he says. But we're going to break down some of what he says. Let me just save these super chats, guys. I appreciate the super chats. It keeps us going. So we're so when I have to rush to, to, to chow down food, um, <laughs> you, you pay for dinner later. All right. So thank you so much for the super chat. We appreciate you guys. All right, hold on one second. Let me also slow down the chat so I can see what you guys are saying. Sorry, y'all. I want to make sure I'm seeing everything you guys are saying. So let me just go backstage and slow this, this chat down. I should have did it beforehand, but look, it is what it is. Like the video is an easy and free way of supporting not just my channel, but other channels that cover similar topics here on YouTube and other platforms. We're also live on Twitch, Twitter, and TikTok behind the scenes. We appreciate you, we appreciate you guys. I see your comments as well. Let me just slow this down a bit so I can see everything. There we go. So, 
So the mistress, I, I knew that this was what's happening. And look, I, I just seen some DMs too, where people are now alleging to know of other mistresses. But I'm not surprised by this. If it wasn't this particular woman coming out, we've heard countless allegations of other women. You heard about the blonde that he walks with in Georgetown. I don't know about that one. But <laughs> I don't know about that one. But we've heard. I told you, I got a FaceTime. I didn't see the woman, but the woman was there. <laughs> okay? Claiming to have had a relationship with with Juan Dixon. And as you also know, once one woman comes out, there will be some clout chasers in between. But where there is smoke, there has got to be some fire. Anyone agree? Especially when you see this relationship on Real Housewives of, Atl uh, of Potomac play out. You're like, even at the nuptials, I was like, are they really going to kiss? Or what are they going to do what they did on you people? CGI that kiss. We'll talk about that tomorrow during um, Tuesday Takeover. So by now, you already know that these two have gotten married. But this whole situation has had a dark cloud over it because this woman came out to Giorgio Says and posted revelations that she had a year-long relationship with Juan Dixon. Year-long conversations. I don't know if you want to call that a relationship. But let's take a listen to this interview. As I, said, as, as I said before, I will cite my sources in the description of this video so you can go support Giorgio and follow his content. I'm going to play this for you guys, all right? Because it's interesting. It's interesting. I have posted in the YouTube chat a poll asking, who do you believe? Do you believe the mistress? Do you believe Robin and Juan or none of them? I haven't looked at the results yet. All right, so let's take a listen to this conversation. And I will be pausing it so we can weigh in in between. All right? All right, let me take myself out of this. Hold on. Now, why am I all in it? <laughs> Doing this, I know we had to move pretty quickly. But like I said, I think we should stick to, for right now, let's stick to what Robin has discussed on Patreon and what she discussed on Watch What Happens Live, which is pretty much the same. But So let's start with... Robin saying, which you already said, you reached out to Juan. So that is correct, right? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. So you reached out to Juan first, and then he obviously entertained the conversation, as we saw in the DMs that you put forward. And from what Robin said on Patreon was that Juan was not interested, but mainly was just being nice and so that you had reached out to him that you had told him that you were coming to maryland because you were dating a ravens football player or something like that can you talk about that because that didn't add up from what you had said to me initially yeah i have no idea where that story came from it's very confusing um i had no reason to go to maryland other than to see one Pause. <laughs> Look, pause. So the story that Robin says that she was really there to be with some other ball player, she's claiming that it's completely false. Her whole reason for going to Maryland was to be with Juan Dixon. Okay. And how long were you guys talking before you came to Maryland the first time? Um, it was like a year, I want to say, at least a year, because there was restrictions with COVID. That is true. And there was no crossing the border at the time. Okay. So that part is true. There was strict, I do recall that. So, but yes. once, once the restrictions were lifted, that's when you made the plan to come but was it that you offered or was it was he the one that said come visit me um it was both it was definitely both of us we both wanted to meet each other and we both were just waiting for the restrictions to be lifted it was always a plan it was always in the in the works 
And so you guys didn't just talk via texting or DMs, right? Like, did you guys ever talk on the phone or FaceTime? Yeah, okay. yeah all the time. <clears throat> Hold on. <laughs> she says all the time. She claims to have spoken to Juan Dixon and had this re online relationship with him and has FaceTime with him, text with him all the time. We'll continue. So when Robin says that, let's let's jump to when you're in Maryland. So you get to Maryland. What was the what was the plan? You got to Maryland and then what? Um, I was just going to meet him at the hotel and just get settled in, I guess. OK. And so the part where Robin suggests that you called Juan when you, I guess, she said that, well, firstly, she said that you, your wallet was stolen in the casino, and then on Watch What Happens Live, she said that you lost your wallet, so this is what prompted you to call Juan, and then Juan, being the good Samaritan, drove to the hotel to put his card down, and then left. Can you clarify that? Um, I don't know what to say to that, because I... It's just outrageous. Is it true or is it like, not it true? It doesn't make sense, Sorry. you mean. Make, and yeah, it just doesn't make sense, any of it. So So you and you and Juan did hang out when you were here? Correct. Okay. So it wasn't he just came and put the car down and left. And was that, the, was that part of his story then, the part about the casino? Because you didn't say anything about that to me. Um, I, like I said, this is the first time I'm kind of hearing these things. Yeah. So. Okay. My question to her, not that I have, not that I want to talk to her. Okay, please. Please. <laughs> um, my question to her, though, is did you go to a casino? How did this casino situation even happen? Did you and Juan go to the casino together? What did you guys do while you were in Maryland? Okay, let's continue. I'm sorry. <laughs> Some of you in the chat are hilarious. Okay, let me continue. I yeah. don't really have, I can't say anything because I have never heard of these stories before. Do you feel like Juan gave her the story that she has regurgitated to all of us? Definitely. Okay. And then did Juan ever tell you that there was any sort of like real relationship with Robin when you guys started talking or was was that clear to you when you guys were taught like did you know that they were in a like relationship or did it very clear that the relationship was for tv like it was for pause pause look we've been saying this look just because she's saying it doesn't necessarily make it true but it is interesting for someone that claims to have well, you can't even say claims. They obviously know each other. For him to go pay for her hotel because she had lost her wallet at some casino, we don't know. That's their story. She's saying that their relationship, Juan Dixon and Robin Dixon's relationship, is just for television. I mean, you don't have to be Miss Cleo to see that, do you? <laughs> Lies! The lie! We'll continue. We will continue. Fans, it was a paycheck. Um, and that was just their obligation, right? And um, they just, they needed to do what they needed to do pretty much for TV. And he made it clear that he does have that respect for Robin, but it was not a real relationship. There was no... It was just so not like a real loving relationship. It was just more of co-parenting and, you know, kind of best buddies. So then My best buddies with that, it's clear that he didn't want to tell her the real story for whatever reason, even though 
you would think that they would be fine with it if it's just for TV. But Guys, the um, now, one last thing. She had also mentioned that you sent Juan a request via Zelle or something for $4,000. Okay, guys, hold on. So this is very interesting, and I'm so surprised that no one picked this up earlier. Because in the, if, if you're just joining us, we're talking about the exclusive interview that Giorgio says has with the mistress that has been involved in this whole Juan Dixon and Robin Dixon situation. She's doing this phone interview with him, and she has already divulged some some things. When I first listened, I had to listen. I listened. This is probably like my fourth time listening to this conversation. The things that I do for you guys. <laughs> Look, the things that I do for you guys. <sighs> so this next part, I literally had to ask Google. I said, Google, girl, is Zell available in Canada? Because I'm not just going to take this woman for her word. And Google, you know what Google said to me? Hell no, it's not available. Let's take a listen. Let's get back into this. Basically, I guess, insinuating that you were asking for the money in order to not go to the blogs or something to that. Can you speak on that? Yeah, it's a little outrageous. And I wish she would have put more thought into her statement because I am in Canada. I am a Canadian citizen. And in 2023, we don't have Zell. We don't accept Zell. I Your Honor, I can confirm this. Zell. I don't have access to that on my phone. There's other means of sending money um, for Canadians, and Zell Western just Union. is not an option. And everybody knows that. So <laughs> I just think it's once again outrageous. And that part, I think, is interesting because I didn't realize that Zelle wasn't available in Canada. But from what you're saying, it's not it's never been available. So um, but so you did not cash. You did not request four thousand dollars from Juan. No, OK, no, did not happen. OK. And then so the 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 end of all this where you stop talking to Juan, that is when you're referring to the friend coming to the door. Right. and exposing himself but robbins claimed that the friend was there in lieu of Juan taking you around and so the friend was there merely to just kind of take you where you wanted to go which i think she said you wanted to go to a, a couple of places that also didn't really make sense like why would you come all the way to maryland just to go to western union but right. um so that's not true. You did not hang out with a friend at all outside of that inappropriate behavior that he displayed. And the other question I would ask her, did you sleep with the friend? Because that that was also, a, first of all, when we talk about allegations against someone, she, Robin says that Juan told her that she slept with the friend. I, I would just ask her these questions because you're coming out here, so we might as well talk about it all. Mention it all. Did you sleep with a friend because she's accusing you of sleeping with a friend? Don't be putting any um, names or bodies on, on me if it's not true. Just because your man's a, a, a cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. Lies. The lies. <sighs> We're going to continue. Guys, you're just joining us. We're talking about the exclusive interview that Giorgio says has with the alleged mistress of Juan Dixon. You guys have been asking me to talk about it and cover it. So we decided to do a last minute live to come here and really break down everything that 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 she's saying in this conversation. So let's continue. No, we did not hang out. I never met him in my life. Um, and I had no um, pre-existing knowledge that he was coming to the hotel to do what he did. And then, so once you left, that was the very last, like you were done with it. Like whether or not you said it to him in your mind, were you done with this whole situation? And let me remind you guys, for those that might be a little confused as to what they're, what they're talking about. So in Giorgio's original video, she alleged to him that basically she accused Juan Dixon allegedly of passing off his, his girls to, to his friends. And that's what she was accusing this 
this um this particular situation with his friend of doing that. And when when her friend came to her hotel room, he exposed himself allegedly to her. Okay, as you know, in Robin's recollection of the story that that she was told by Juan Dixon was that no, she she ended up hooking up with this friend. I would need at least my follow up question to her, to her would be: Did you sleep with this friend? Did you have any sexual look? For the love of Bill Clinton, did you have sexual relationships relations with this man? <laughs> Just asking. I'm not trying to be, you know, all in your business. But if you're going to come out and talk about this stuff, we need to clear some things up so we can clear your name. Look, clear your name. I mean, you're still the mistress, though. Okay, let's continue. I'm, I apologize. I know you guys have places to be and things to do on this Monday evening. Let's finish up. Once that happens. A little bit violated and obviously naive a little bit as well, but. Into that kind of thing, I don't know. I guess everybody has their own things that they like, but I thought talking with him for a whole year, I somewhat did get to know him and I just I didn't see that coming at the end at all no and it sounds pretty shocking I mean that would be pretty scary I think for anybody um and but so all in all you and you and Juan absolutely did hang out and I I don't I don't want to go into detail but I would would you say that things went further than just hanging out basically did they have sex you know what I'm saying I don't want, I'm not here to uh, like hurt Robin. Sure. I was never trying to hurt Robin. Um, and uh, like I said, I'm not a malicious person like that. So I, I, I'm not going to get into all those details, but okay. we didn't just, he didn't just get me a hotel room to get me a hotel room to say goodbye. Period. Period. Per period. Uh You heard what she said? He didn't just get me a hotel room just to say goodbye. So she is denying the allegations that Robin has brought to multiple platforms at this point and national television, claiming that Juan was the, he was the, he was helping a, da a damsel in distress. Her, her wallet was stolen or she lost her wallet. We still haven't figured that part out. See, I, I would need the answer to that question. Did you lose your wallet at any point? Because where did, where did this particular story come from? Did you lose your wallet? So she's saying that she did hang out with Juan. I would need more details. What'd you guys do? Did you guys go hold your hands in Georgetown? <laughs> and what do you look like? Do you have blonde hair? Damn it. Why do we ask these questions? Sorry, Georgia. <laughs> look, are you blonde? Do you look like Karen? I'm, I, I know you're thinking it, even though they've said the Georgetown woman is different than the Canadian woman. But you just never know. We're trying to see a pattern. We're trying to see, does Juan Dixon have a type? Okay. Let's get back into this. Um, right. Well, yeah, let's, let's, you let's know what? Um, I, and I want to clarify this for everyone as well. Um, I wholeheartedly believe that you had the the most integrity with dealing with this. So I want to send my like my hats off to you for that because this is not an easy situation a to have to talk about and then for it to go public and then hear someone claim rebuttals that are that are lies. So I appreciate you um, sticking through it and we're gonna leave it. I think we'll leave it here. Um, because okay. I think we just wanted to kind of give rebuttals to what Robin said Juan told her. I don't want to say Robin's story because this is not her story. It's something clearly Juan told her and she's going with it. So we're going to leave it here for right now. But no, we want more. Is there anything <laughs> that you want to say to end, to end this call? Or is there anything you want to say to Robin or Juan? Uh... 
really, I think they should somewhat just admit what happened and leave it at that. That's pretty much, I would appreciate that. I'm not a fan of the fake stories and this narrative of things that didn't happen. I don't, I don't really understand why she needs to add so many other things in. Uh, it'd be cool if they could just admit it, leave it where it's at and kind of move on, be real, speak your truth, but don't add lies in with that. Like literally speak your truth. That's what they're both paid to do right on TV, the reality stars. So that's what Andy said. That's what Andy said. So, okay, then, well, I really appreciate your time. As I've mentioned, I will continue to keep you anonymous. So I will omit any use of your name and um, we will speak offline. I just want to actually just thank you. And if you could just continue to guide me or support me, I would just greatly appreciate that. Absolutely. Thank you so much. You're Look. Shout out to Giorgio. As I said before, I'll be putting his video in the description so you guys, because you know what we do here, we cite our sources. So if you're just joining us, uh, the mistress that has been in the mix of the whole Juan Dixon and Robin Dixon situation is speaking out in a new interview. And I know some of you are saying, please do not dox people in our chat because you will be removed. So please do not dox anyone, meaning reveal anyone's um, identity in our chat. And I will not be doing that on this platform. She wants to remain anonymous. So we're going to respect that. <sighs> Sorry. All right. <sighs> Let me take a sip, y'all. Shout out to everyone watching on TikTok. We appreciate you all being here as well. We are talking about this situation. We are doing a follow-up on the situation because we have been following the situation and since the mistress has spoken out. So now she's doing an exclusive interview. And as I said to you before, I have a couple of more questions. And I know some of you say, you should interview her. No, thank you. Because you know what? There are plenty of other women in the DMV that allegedly have had relationships with Juan Dixon that I could speak to that probably have had longer relationships than this weekend affair. Jay says, is she blonde at least? <laughs> is she blonde at least? Look, guys, we have over 3,000 people watching on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and Twitter, and TikTok. We have 1,000 people here. If you're just joining us, be sure to follow if you're not, because this is what we do here on the platform. We talk about not just reality TV stars, but everything in pop culture. Don't forget, tomorrow we will be live at 12.30 p.m. Eastern, 9.30 a.m. PST, for a recap of some of your favorite reality TV shows and pop culture news, including the Grammys. We have a lot to unpack here, but we had a last minute live to do tonight because we saw that this interview had come out and I wanted to break down some of what came out of it. I listened to it like four or five times. This is probably my fifth time listening to it. And as I said to you before, I have a couple more questions for her, but she's not willing and I get it. Look, you don't want to talk about your, you don't want, look, I don't need her to talk sp explicitly. I just need her to answer me one or two questions. Did you sleep with one? No, no. Okay. Let me be more explicit. Did you have sex or sexual relate? Look, no, you gotta be specific nowadays. Did you have sexual relations with Juan Dixon? Did you communicate with Robin? Did you reach out to her? Cause that was another question I would have. Did you reach out to her? Because Robin claims that this woman reached out to Giselle. She reached out to Robin Dixon. I have questions. L lady, did you reach out to these women? And why did you reach out to Giselle, of all people? And why did you decide to reach out to a blogger to report on this? I'm asking. I want to know. Like, what are your intentions? This is part of the reason why there's certain people that I just wouldn't interview because I need to know your intentions. Is your you want to sit here and claim like you value and you care about Robin Dixon, but what is your intention by coming out? Do you want to expose Juan? Because I think we are brushing over that last part of the initial story in regards to him passing girls off to his friends. So that, that part of me is just, I have additional questions. Did you have sexual relations with Juan Dixon? Did you, why did you reach out to Giselle and Robin Dixon? Why did you reach out to them? 
What was your intention? Why did you, well, I think the reason why she stopped communicating with him was because he passed girls off to his friends. And the other part of this I would want to know is, did you lose your wallet? Did you have sexual relations, relations with Juan's friend? Because they're also accusing her of those two things. Or maybe Robin misspoke and said Zell and she meant Western Union. Look, I'm sure. Guys, do you believe that this is just going to give Robin Dixon more of a storyline for season eight? Because some of you are demanding over the weekend, Fire Robin was trending. But some of you are saying, maybe demote her. And some of you are saying, keep her. Now she has an interesting storyline. Is she willing to share the interesting storyline? As I said to you before, I wasn't shocked by the news of someone coming out saying that they had a relationship with Juan Dixon. I was shocked at... Karen's story about the woman looking like her and being blonde and they walk hand in hand in Georgetown. I was a little shocked by that. I thought he was a little bit better with hiding his secrets. But you guys that live in the DMV have been reporting to me for at least the last two years that Juan Dixon and these rumors have, have surrounded him for years. But some of you are also saying, I didn't need to hear these rumors to not believe in this relationship. So in this new interview with Giorgio Says, this woman from Canada, the Canadian mistress, Claims that they're just doing this for television. Look, I am no, um, look, I am no newbie to covering these types of stories. So I don't believe anybody. I have trust issues with everybody in this whole situation. I don't believe anyone. I do believe that there was some inappropriate relationship between Juan Dixon and this woman. They've confirmed that. According to Robin, they had to work through this whole situation. But what was the length? Of the, see, that's the... Not what was the length. I can't. What was the, 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 the depth of this relationship? Did they have sexual relationships? And when I say sexual relationships, it doesn't have to be the in and the out. It could also be other things. Come on, we're grown. Come on. We're grown. <laughs> Come on, we're grown. All right. Guys, we have over 3,000 people in on YouTube, almost 1,000 on TikTok. Be sure to follow. Be sure to like this video. Be sure to share this video. Be sure to subscribe. And let me just say thank you because we did have a, quite a few super chats. And look, as I said before, I do not take your super chats lightly. They do help us to continue to create content without the limits of sponsors and advertisers and things like that. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me just post the call-in link because, yes, we're going to take some callers, some quick callers we're going to take. But I'm going to post this for members only on the, on the community tab. So if you are a member of the channel, I am posting the call-in link. First, I'm going to post it for our senior royals because it's part of their membership. Just saying. <laughs> Look, it's what it is. Hold on, y'all. Let me just do this, do this, do this. Shout out to everyone watching on Twitch and Twitter. I see you guys as well. Excuse me, y'all. I literally just ate dinner. So if I have a little indigestion and I'm talking and working, you will understand, okay? <laughs> All right, I'm working. Just had a good old Parmesan, uh, ch chicken Parmesan, chicken parm. There we go. Okay, Royal Court members, I'll be dropping the call-in link for you in a second. Let me just pull this over here. For those of you that want to hear the audio again, I'm not going to replay because everyone here has already heard it, unless everybody in the comments starts saying, no, replay, replay. I'm not going to replay. <laughs> All right. Let me just say thank you because we had a few super chats. So let me just say thank you. Uh, Blue Plug sent in the super chat. Um, oh, thank you so much for the super chat. We appreciate you. Uh, Robert, Robert Dixon. Thank you for the super chat, Blue Plug. Um, Shady Millennial, thank you for the super chat. Shady Millennial says, was it just me or did y'all see on Watch What Happens Live that Andy Cohen missed and, and peed a bit on the crotch area? Oh, you know what? <laughs> Why? What? What? What are we doing here? Come on now. Um, Briss, Brisa, thank you so much for the super chat. This is giving me flashbacks to when Ashley, Ashley, believed uh, Michael when he said he only stayed in the hotel and didn't sleep with the girl or woman. You remember that when we saw the photo of him in his underwear in the hotel? Mm-hmm. 
But honestly, these rumors have, have followed Juan Dixon for a long time. This is not the first time. All right, I'm seeing replay, replay. Okay, maybe I'll replay it because it's not very long. We, it'll give, give me a second, y'all. Let me get through these super chats. Um, and thank you guys on TikTok for the gifts. I saw your gifts. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate you. Be Blessed says, but according to Giselle, the Chris lie wasn't during filming at that time, but she brought it up months later when it was now an issue this season. Yeah, when you think about what Robin says to Andy, he's like, well, it wasn't an issue for us now. Okay. Your issue with, with Chris was how long ago? But you like Chris. That's what you said. Let me just save this. Hold on, y'all. <clears throat> um, thank you, Deja. Deja says, according to Juan, Robin was sleeping until 2 p.m. during the pandemic. So that gave Juan plenty of time to be booed up on the phone with the mistress. You know what, Deja? You got a point. Not that, like, I really do believe her, this mistress when she says that this is a business relationship. I really do believe that. Uh, Mimi, thank you so much for the super chat. Mimi says, um, as an Aries, we do not claim Robin and her antics. <laughs> she really does not give me Aries vibes. I'm very good friends with a lot of Aries. I do not get Aries vibes from this woman. All right. Let me just finish these up. Danielle, thank you so much for the super chat. Danielle says, the hotel she stayed in has a casino down. You know what, DMV? Thank you, Danielle. <laughs> okay. Mm, so maybe they did go to the casino. <laughs> I appreciate providing clarity. Thank you, Danielle. So there's a casino at the hotel. So maybe they did go to the casino together. I wonder, did anyone see them? I just feel like in the DMV, if he was with some woman in public like that, someone would have taken a picture. Danielle, thank you so much for another super chat. Danielle says the hotel is literally around the corner from their old house in Hanover, Maryland. Oh, so he knows it very well. I don't know. Part of me really believes the mistress in regards to this being more than just him trying to be, you know, save some woman because it that made no sense to any of us. Uh, Stephanie, thank you so much for the super chat. Stephanie says there was no reason for Robin to have said anything. She basically got away with everything. There is something she and Juan are trying to get ahead of something. Oh, it doesn't make sense. Oh. Oh. Because you could technically say that she could have avoided even responding to the mistress, right? She could have she could have avoided that. And just have been like, people talk, people talk. But it was interesting that she decided to speak out on this particular woman. Maybe because she had received, I don't know. The hotel receipt. Patrina, thank you. Uh, oh, no. Patrina said, I saved this because I wanted to bring this up. She says, how would she get back to Canada if she lost her wallet? Juan. Uh, okay. He helped her find something. Okay. I don't know. Maybe her wallet and her passport were separate. <laughs> uh, Patrina, good question. Be blessed. Thank you so much for the super chat. Um, okay. Um what? Hold, hold, wait, how come, oh, there we go. Uh, Mims allegedly found found one. Juan's type is is a brunette. Look, like I said before, we're not doxing anybody, so I, I can't tell people how to what to, how to conduct themselves on their channels. But we won't be doing that here. Um, there's no integrity in cheating ever. Boy, bye. Mm. Um, Shady, thank you so much for the super chat. Shady says, Robin knew he cheated, but is saving face for the public. She'd rather look gullible than be seen as someone who knowingly stays in a relationship of legal convenience, guys in holy matrimony. Well, there definitely is a bigger situation here. I don't know how, what she plans, plans for this, but it doesn't make sense. Jasmine says, let's start a petition to get Robin off our TV. <laughs> oh, Lord. you already know that's going to happen at some point. I'm actually surprised it hasn't happened already, especially after it started trending over the weekend. Um, thank you so much, Jasmine, for the super chat. Uh, Miss Beverly, thank you so much for the super chat. Miss Beverly says, uh, what was there to work through if nothing happened? Well, him, you know, talking with other women and da 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 Look, da 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 because he was bored. Look, we don't believe any of that. <laughs> we don't believe any of that. Jasmine, thank you so much for the super chat. Jasmine says, where is the marriage certificate? 
Well, there's a part in the Watch What Happens Live interview that we're not talking about. And that part is when she says she's surprised that um, she's surprised that no one has found the certificate and how they were able to keep this marriage situation a secret for so long. But I do find that interesting that we haven't seen the marriage certificate. We did see when they applied for the marriage certificate, but we haven't seen one yet. And I remember when I was speaking to Giorgio, he was saying his contact at, at, at the Bureau of Marriages, you know, City Hall, basically was saying that usually something like that happens if someone, one, one party in the relationship makes the request for it not to be public. I'm not sure how that works. We will, I'm sure at some point that marriage certificate will surface. I don't believe that this was a fake marriage, to be honest with you. I believe they did get married. I do. I do. All right. <laughs> you guys are hilarious in the chat. Hold on. Um, seduced by SKB. Thank you so much for the super chat. We appreciate you. All right. Um, Zena, thank you so much for the super chat. We appreciate you as well. And Pat, thank you for the super sticker. We appreciate you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. We appreciate all of the support any way that you can, even by watching and liking the video. Shout out to our mods. I've Appreciate our mods being here at, at, for this last minute live. Hold on, y'all. Let me drop the link for our Royal Court members as well. If you are a Team Kempire member, I'm going to drop the link for you as well. So we'll just be taking calls from our members today just because it is a last minute live and I'm about to get out of here. Look, <laughs> I'm about to get out of here. This was a last minute live. So I want to hear what, what the folks have to say. Hold on one second. All right. So if you're a member of the channel, I have posted the call-in link on the community tab on YouTube. Again, guys, we have over 3,400 3, people here for this breaking news, this new interview with Juan Dixon's alleged mistress. And she's basically saying that, okay, let's play it one more time. Before I, I'll play it one more time without me interrupting it. So you guys can hear from beginning to end. And then I'll take some callers, okay? So let's do that. Hold on one second. Let me pull it back up. Robin, get... Okay, hold on. Please hold. We're going to play it one more time, and then we'll take some callers. All right. And we'll get to um, the other Super Chats afterwards. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. Okay, so thank you for doing this. I know we had to move pretty quickly, but like I said, I think we should stick to, for right now, let's stick to what Robin has discussed on Patreon and what she discussed on Watch What Happens Live, which is pretty much the same. But So let's start with Robin saying, which you already said, you reached out to Juan. So that is correct, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. So you reached out to Juan first, and then he obviously entertained the conversation, as we saw in the DMs that you put forward. And from what Robin said on Patreon was that Juan was not interested, but mainly was just being nice. And so that you had reached out to him, that you had told him that you were coming to Maryland because you were dating a Ravens football player or something like that. Can you talk about that? Because that didn't add up from what you had said to me initially. Yeah, I have no idea where that story came from. It's very confusing. Um, I had no reason to go to Maryland other than to see one. And how long were you guys talking before you came to Maryland the first time? Um, it was a good year, I want to say, at least a year, because there was restrictions with COVID, that is true, and there was no crossing the border at the time. Okay, so that part is true. There was strict, I do recall that. So, but yes. once once the restrictions were lifted, that's when you made the plan to come. But was it that you offered or was it, was he the one that said, come visit me? 
Um, it was both. It was definitely both of us. We both wanted to meet each other and we both were just waiting for the restrictions to be lifted. It was always a plan. It was always in the in the works. And so you guys didn't just talk via texting or DMs, right? Like, did you guys ever talk on the phone or FaceTime? Yeah, okay. yeah all the time. <clears throat> so... When Robin says that, let's let's jump to when you're in Maryland. So you get to Maryland. What was the what was the plan? You got to Maryland, and then what? Um, I was just going to meet him at the hotel and just get settled in, I guess. Okay. And so the part where Robin suggests that you called Juan when you, I guess, she said that well. Firstly, she said that you your wallet was stolen in the casino. And then on Watch What Happens Live, she said that you lost your wallet. So this is what prompted you to call Juan. And then Juan, being the Good Samaritan, drove to the hotel to put his card down and then left. Can you clarify that? Um, I don't know what to say to that because I, it's just outrageous. Like, it doesn't make sense, you mean? It and yeah, it just doesn't make sense, any of it, so. So you and you and Juan did hang out when you were here? Correct. Okay, so it wasn't he just came and put the car down and left. And was that, the, was that part of his story then, the part about the casino? Because you didn't say anything about that to me. Um... I, like I said, this is the first time I'm kind of hearing these things. Yeah. So I yeah. don't really have, I can't say anything because I have never heard of these stories before. Do you feel like Juan gave her the story that she has regurgitated to all of us? Definitely. Okay. And then did Juan ever tell you that there was any sort of like real relationship with Robin when you guys started talking or was was that clear to you when you guys were taught like did you know that they were in a like relationship or did it very clear that the relationship was for tv like it was for the fans it was a paycheck um and that was just their obligation right and um they just they needed to do what they needed to do pretty much for TV. And he made it clear that he does have that respect for Robin, but it was not a real relationship. There was no, it was just so not like a real loving relationship. It was just more of co-parenting and, you know, kind of best buddies. So then with that, it's clear that he didn't want to tell her the real story for whatever reason, even though you would think that they would be fine with it if it's just for TV. But um, now one last thing, she had also mentioned that you sent Juan a request via Zelle or something for $4,000, basically, I guess, insinuating that you were asking for the money in order to not go to the blogs or something to that. Can you speak on that? Yeah, it's a little outrageous. And I wish she would have put more thought into her statement because I am in Canada. I am a Canadian citizen. And in 2023, we don't have Zelle. We don't accept Zelle. I can't request Zelle. I don't have access to that on my phone. There's other means of sending money um, for Canadians and Zelle just is not an option and everybody knows that. So I just think it's once again, outrageous. And that part I think is interesting because I didn't realize that Zelle wasn't available in Canada, but from what you're saying, it's not, it's never been available. So um, but so you did not cash, you did not request $4,000 from Juan. No, okay. No, did not happen. Okay. And then, so the, the, the end of all this, where you stop talking to Juan, that is when you're referring to the friend coming to the door right. and exposing himself. 
But Robbins claimed that the friend was there in lieu of Juan taking you around. And so the friend was there merely to just kind of take you where you wanted to go, which I think she said you wanted to go to a, a couple of places that also didn't really make sense. Like, why would you come all the way to Maryland just to go to Western Union? But right. um, so that's not true. You did not hang out with a friend at all outside of that inappropriate behavior that he displayed. No, no he did not hang out. I never met him in my life. Um, and I had no... Um, pre-existing knowledge that he was coming to the hotel to do what he did. And then, so once you left, that was the very last, like you were done with it. Like whether or not you said it to him in your mind, were you done with this whole situation once that happened? A little bit violated and obviously naive a little bit as well, but into that kind of thing I don't know I guess everybody has their own things that they like but I thought talking with him for a whole year I somewhat did get to know him and I just I didn't see that coming at the end at all no and it sounds pretty shocking I mean that would be pretty scary I think for anybody um and but so all in all, you and you and Juan absolutely did hang out. And I, I don't I don't want to go into detail, but I would would you say that things went further than just hanging out? Do you know what I'm saying? I don't want I'm not here to uh, like hurt Robin. Sure. I was never trying to hurt Robin. Um, and like I said, I'm not a malicious person like that. So I, I, I'm not going to get into all those details. But okay. We didn't just he didn't just get me a hotel room to get me a hotel room to say goodbye. Um, right. Well, yeah, that's, that's, you that's know what? Um, I, and I want to clarify this for everyone as well. Um, I wholeheartedly believe that you had the the most integrity with dealing with this. So I want to send my like my hats off to you for that because this is not an easy situation a to have to talk about and then for it to go public and then hear someone claim rebuttals that are that are lies so i appreciate you um sticking through it and we're gonna leave it i think we'll leave it here um okay. because i think we just wanted to kind of give rebuttals to what robin said juan told her i don't want to say robin story because this is not her story it's something clearly Juan told her and she's going with it so we're gonna leave it here for right now but is there anything that you want to say to end to end this call or is there anything you want to say to Robin or Juan uh really I think they should just leave it at that that's pretty much, I would appreciate that. I'm not a fan of the fake stories and this narrative of things that didn't happen. I don't, I don't really understand why she needs to add so many other things in. Uh, it'd be cool if they could just admit it, leave it where it's at and kind of move on, be real, speak your truth, but don't add lies in with that. Like literally speak your truth. That's what they're both paid to do right on tv the reality stars so that's what andy like said that's what andy said so okay then well i really appreciate your time we will end it there <clears throat> again as always we'll be citing our sources in the description that was from georgia says his exclusive interview with with the mistress juan dixon's alleged mistress hold on yeah let me turn that because i'm getting a little too much feedback over here that must be better. Some of you on Twitch weren't able to hear, but you guys can hear me on, on YouTube. So if you're having issues, sound issues on any other platform, YouTube is the where to, where to be. We have a large audience following watching there. You can also watch from our website, thekempire.com. So be sure to check that out and more information on my social media and our podcast, our podcast, which is amply titled 
Fire Robin Dixon this week. A new episode came out earlier today, so be sure to subscribe to the Gempire Radio podcast. And thank you to all of you for the follows on TikTok, Twitch, and Twitter. We appreciate you guys. We're going to take some callers because I know the callers have opinions, but callers, there is a long line. So please keep your thoughts short. All right? Keep your thoughts short so we can get to everyone. I have a feeling we'll be talking about this again. Okay? All right. Let me just bring up our first caller. First of all, let me put up my disclaimer. Look, let me put my and callers, no profanity, no profanity, no derogatory statements, no talking about people's bodies or referring to people as in, in a, a male form. Please, let's not. Thank you. Remember, this is my platform. Whatever you do on yours, that's yours. But this is mine. Thank you. All right, let me switch over to this. Hold on. All right. Okay, before we take callers, let me just say, because we had quite a few Super Chats. I, I miss Nia's Super Chat. Nia, thank you so much for the Super Chat. She says, Robin sounds silly. She's literally going to have to keep up with the story that she believes him. That's why she's going after Karen so much. A hit dog hollers, and Robin was hollering at Karen. <laughs> thank you, Nia. We appreciate you. Hope all is well. AMS, thank you for the Super Chat. AMS says all of them are lying, including Mrs. Miss Anonymous. <laughs> I believe, look, I agree. I have trust issues with all of them. All of them. Miss Nikki, thank you so much for the super chat. She says, the wedding wasn't last minute. Production was present and accounted for. Okay. Um, well, it kind of was last minute because when you think about it, that was they, they wrapped filming in July. This was in August, so late August. So, technically. <laughs> and we don't even know if it was production that filmed it. It could have been a separate production company. Remember what, what Cynthia did? Um, but then, you know, Robin, probably not. <laughs> Seduce uh, by SKB. Thank you so much for the super chat. She says, how is he helping a woman, but not the, st damn, damn. Allegedly, allegedly. That's what he's being accused of in that lawsuit at the school. Sharon, thank you so much for the super chat. Sharon says, I hope Robin learned her lesson. Keep your mouth shut. I honestly, and, and as a lot of celebrities could learn from that by not addressing what people are saying on social media or in these interviews. Actually, sometimes it's better because if you give light to it, it makes the story bigger. Okay, uh, Mr. Chakalaki, thank you so much for the uh, super chat. Oh, you have it pronounced here. Mr. Shalaki. There we go. I don't even know how Wendy and Candace can remain on this show with all the hypocrisy, double standards, and colorism. It's never fair. And it's probably part of the reason why people are so critical of them when they try to move on and forgive these ladies and be friends with these ladies because they're doing it so they can stay on this show, unfortunately. Um, Linda, thank you so much for the super chat. She says, restrictions started, restarted to, restarted, started restrictions started to end in september of 2021 huh huh interesting okay look okay um miss misty thank you so much for the super chat we appreciate you supporting the channel guys we do appreciate all of the super chats the venmos the cash ups the paypals all of that stuff we appreciate that more information on our sponsors and ways to follow us on social media and our podcast are available in the description of this video. All right, let me get to these callers because they've been waiting patiently behind the scenes. Again, callers, keep it short because it's late and I have other shows to watch and news to cover for tomorrow for our Tuesday takeover at 12.30 p.m. Eastern. So I, I need to get to watching and preparing for tomorrow. All right, Mocha's backstage. Uh-oh, <laughs> Mocha, what's going on? Oh, I didn't know I was the first one. Hey, Kim Pyre. Hey. You know what? This whole thing could have been avoided if Robin just said he cheated and that was it and just left it from there. She didn't have to make up this whole story because the lie is always bigger than everything else. Yeah. And then secondly, I am a, a marriage officiant and in, in most states you have to sign the marriage certificate. So even marriage license, I should say. So they get married and the officiant has to sign off on it. But depending on the state, you can hold it until the expiration date. So the expiration date is this month. So it may not get, they may have asked the person to turn it in close to the due date. 
makes sense because, to like, keep it a secret. He, right. Because usually the person who does the the wedding, they're the one that hand it, hands it in. They don't leave it to the bride or groom because, oh. you know, they're getting married and they can lose it. Oh, so, um, yeah. So that may be it. So the time to start looking is now. If if it expires in February, start looking now to see when it pops up. You already know but people are if, checking. <laughs> right. But if it's Maryland law or the municipality's law that if one of the parties wants it to, you know, not to be public, they can do so. But in most oh, okay. most places, marriage certificates, birth certificates, death certificates, you have to be a party of that in order to get a copy of it, like a parent, a child, uh, maybe a grandchild, but, you know, it has to be someone, you know, a party involved to get a copy of it. Well, thank you so much for the knowledge. I, I, we have some of the most knowledgeable people watching and calling in. All right, so Mocha. If anyone wants to get married, get at me. I can marry you. Where are Any you? Type of wedding. I'm in Connecticut. Okay. So, so just so people know, Mocha. <laughs> and where can they follow you, Mocha? I'm at Mocha Mima on all platforms. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Mocha. <laughs> all Bye. right. You're welcome. <laughs> I, and I will only do that for Mocha. Don't try and call in and try to advertise your business. Mocha is a longtime member of this channel. And so people know who she is. And she, and she gets at people. <laughs> all right. Candace is backstage. We're going to bring her up next. What's going on, Candace? Hey, Kim Power. How are you? I'm well. How are you doing? I'm good. Um. We were having a little chat backstage because we couldn't hear with the replay of oh, this so. video. It's fine. We we talked amongst ourselves. Oh. <laughs> so it's I fine. don't know why. That's weird. But, <laughs> it, it's fine. Um, Robin played herself in this situation. And I know we say, you know, they may not be together, whatever, whatever. They presented to us as if they were a couple. So I'm gonna go, I'm I'm gonna believe that that they were a couple. Juan cheated on her, but now she's getting all of the smoke based on what Juan did. Mm. So I feel like Robin, not to say throw him under the bus, but get on top of the story and be like, yeah, he cheated, you know, and not participate in the slander of Karen's marriage. And if Karen, you know, if Ray cheated on Karen or Karen cheated on Ray, whatever, but you know how it feels. Mm. So my thing is you could have came out on top and helped squash that story. Because my thing is, if I know people in glass houses should not throw stones. If I know I got something on the back burner, I'm not going to participate in anybody else's demise or whatever else they got on. Does that make, you know, mm -hmm. you know what I'm trying? I'm getting my words tied up, but no, I get pretty it. much Robin played herself oh. in this situation. And now all of the heat is on her when it should be on Juan. Yeah. I was saying that earlier today. I don't know if you saw when we were talking about it earlier. I feel the same way as it. She's getting the heat because she is the one regurgitating this information. But at the end of the day, if this is true, right. Juan is the one that cheated. And this is not the first time. Exactly. Exactly. All right, Candace. Thank that's you for calling That's if they together in. for real. Now, if they're not together for real, then that's, that's different. Well, that's a whole nother situation. <laughs> All right. And guys, if you, if you are listening, if they are not together, if they are not, if, what does that change for you? How do you feel about this? Do you want her to come back on the show if it is true that this is a fake relationship for television? So it's her storyline. All right, Miss Beverly's backstage. We're going to bring her up for a short and shady comment. What's going on, Miss Beverly? Hey, Campaya. How are you this evening? I'm well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good to get back again. But anyway, I, what I wanted to say is uh, there is what the... Well, I'm not going to call her the mistress because they weren't married. What the young lady said, what Robin said, and then the, and what Juan said, and then there's the truth in smack dab in the middle. Yeah. However, it's crazy for Robin to keep repeating that dumb story about him going to lay his credit card down. If I meet somebody on the internet and they call me, tell me they're in my city and they lost their wallet or what have you, and can I, before they get it out, they mouth good. I'm going to say, well, you better find a way to get back home. Nobody's doing that mess these days. And anyway, and I do believe her more so than Robin. Does she, I mean, you know, she's got, she's, she's bitter. She's sour because she said 
you know, they had been communicating for about a year. And of course, that is human nature. She's somewhere down the line. She probably thought she was going to have a real relationship with Juan. Mm. And she really didn't know his true character if what she's saying happened with yeah. the friend happened. But um, she should not make it look like she didn't want to hurt Robin because yeah. if she didn't want to hurt Robin or Juan, then she would have just kept her mouth shut and we wouldn't even be having this live right now. Yeah, like the other um mistresses, allegedly. Exactly. <laughs> she should she should know her position and play it. Yeah. Because oh. you know, just keep your mouth shut. Okay. And that's just the bottom line. But um somewhere down the line being want um saying that she wanna remain anonymous trust and believe somewhere down the line she's going to conveniently we're going to find out exactly who she is. Okay, Miss mm -hmm. Beverly. Thanks for <laughs> calling in. <laughs> All right. We have a long line of people backstage. So again, guys, let's keep it short and shady so everyone, I so I can get to everyone because it is almost 9 o'clock here in New York City. All right. Uh, Rasani, I'm going to bring you up next. Hold on. What's going on, Rasani? I don't know why you like to say that when you see me calling in. No, I do it for everyone. <laughs> no, no. I think you saved the speech for me. No, not at all. Because you really you don't call in as much anymore either. So it's no, it's not. <laughs> I, I know. I know. I'm just messing with you. Oh, thoughts um, on with the Robin and Juan situation. OK, first of all, we need to assume that this is a conversation that Robin and Juan had mm. with the excuses and all that good stuff. Yeah. I'm tending to lean more on the side of um, the young lady from Canada. Okay. Um, first of all, when Rob, okay, this is what got me. So she did the, the, the podcast and said, if you want more details, the Patreon. And I think that's the thing that um, bothers people the most, the Patreon. Yeah. Um, and then you go and watch what happens and say it anyway. So what was the point of all that? Yeah. I'm just saying. And even like watching Watch What Happens Live, Andy looked pissed. <laughs> Rightfully so. <laughs> looked a little annoyed. Because I'm paying you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm paying you. I'm paying you to Good tell money. your story, and you want our viewers to pay extra to see something else? No, that's not going to happen. Okay. Um, with the Ravens thing, she came there for a Baltimore Ravens player. So why wasn't the player paying for the room? Make it make sense. Right? I mean, if you're going to tell a lie, at least make it make sense. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. But, you know, I, I think Robin needs to go. Um, mm. Giselle probably needs to be. No, sorry, that's my niece. <laughs> Giselle probably needs to be demoted to a friend of because oh. they're talking about, you know, the whole. Um, oh, this happened in the past. We've moved past it. Rah, rah, rah. But you're trying to smoke up and shine light to everybody else's relationship. So. No, both as a matter, you know, both of them can go. Oh, so, <laughs> okay, Rosani, thank you so much for calling in. Thanks, Kim Paris. <laughs> Talk to you later. See ya. Good night, everyone. <laughs> oh wow, how do you guys feel about that? <laughs> Look, how do you feel about that? All right, let me just save this. Hold on, we'll get to the super chats after the um the callers, guys. Hold on one second. All right, Janelle's backstage. We're gonna bring Janelle up next. What's going on, Janelle? Bonjour, Natalia. <laughs> How are you, darling? How well how are you? Girl, it's been a long day, but I'm gonna keep it short and cute. Bonjour. Anyways, let me tell let me say this. I think this is all cover up. I think they just pulled a Lisa Renna and Erica Jane. Remember, I think it was Garcelle who said on Beverly Hills that we're no longer talking about Erica. Oh when they brought up about Kathy Hilton's um outburst at, in Aspen. Mm -hmm. We're no longer talking about the sexual assault scandal. Oh, okay, careful Coffin. words words. Oh, it's okay. Oh, continue, oh, continue. Sorry, sorry. That's okay. Go. Um <laughs> that scandal. Mm -hmm. That scandal at Coppin State. Mm -hmm. If y'all don't know what it is, go look it up. You got Google Schmoogle. Boom, 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 pow. Um, I believe that it's a cover up. Mm -hmm. And and because we're no longer talking about it, that's a very serious ac accusation that can literally tarnish Juan's reputation. He will have a hard time finding a job. 
um, at any other school. He was lucky to even get that job in the first place. So I think this whole mess, they're probably, I, because I think stupid is so, I think stupid is stupid does. What's that line from Horace Gump? Stupid is what stupid does. That's what it is. Remember that line from the movie? Mm -hmm. Yes. Because they probably thought, well, a lot of house husbands have cheated on their wives. It's not a big deal. It's whatever. People forgive them and and, pe and keep it moving because all people care about is how the wife is going to react to it, so on and so forth. Yes, that, that has been true for certain housewives in the past. We forgive them. We keep watching the show because we want to see the women win. And we're like, you see, you shouldn't have been with that man in the first place. Or I'm so glad that you... Um, that you went back to him, whatever. People have different perspectives for different housewives. And that's probably what they thought with this whole mess. However, Robin, people have been wanting you gone for a good three or four seasons, girl. It wasn't going to work for you. So stop acting like this was going to just like be brushed under the rug and people weren't going to look into it. Like, stop it. Stop it. You are so much smarter than this. And also the fact that you Is have she? a black... <laughs> Child... And here's the thing. I'm telling you, I already have people in my DMs today claiming two other relationships. Well, didn't you? I remember this. Last season, you had a, you had a, um, you were doing a recap of Potomac. And I remember a caller calling in where she said that she had a friend that lived near where Robin's new house is mm -hmm. and how she never saw. Juan yes. Oh, in damn. Good house. brain. Okay, remembering. I and I remember that, and I remember thinking, is this relationship real? Is this a relationship of convenience? Mm. See, as a viewer, I already know a lot of them be like hiding stuff behind the scenes. They don't want all their stuff out there. Then don't be on reality TV. Don't. Then don't be on reality TV. Like I could never be on reality TV. I just can't. I got too many skeletons in my oh. closet. <laughs> okay, I be doing too much. Okay, I be doing too much. Okay, we and I don't tell. want my out there. I don't want people contacting my family members. Oh, tell me more. Tell me more. I don't want any of that type of drama. I could never sign up for it, but you signed up for it because that check was looking really good and you were filing for bankruptcy and your house was being foreclosed on. So you needed that check. And so you're like, oh, let me sign up for this mess. But your husband was not, or ex-husband or whatever he is today, he was not for it. And he wasn't for it because he was still stepping out on you. Mm -mm -mm. Like I'm looking at Robin real crazy right now because this is no redemption storyline. Girl, you trying to save your job when there's no job for to be had. Just throw in the towel and keep it moving. Like, I, I, I just want to end on this note. Just It's time just for Robin to go. Like, this just, this is, this smells like desperation. Oh, <laughs> it, it just Sounds like Robin. All it, right, Janelle. Like I'm out. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome. Bye. I mean, here's the thing, though. You saw that big, beautiful house that you bought. I'm sure the mortgage is not paid off. How is she going to pay for this? With the hats? Okay. All right. Um, Miss Esquire's backstage. We're going to bring her up next. What's going on, Miss Esquire? Uh oh. <laughs> I'm going to be good because my little one is um, right here in front of me eating some ice cream. Good evening. How are you, Kim Pryor? How are you? I'm well. Let me just say that this is a scheme that Giselle came up with to come to Robin with the BS. And that is, I'm going to stand 10 toes down on this. Because if Robin told Giselle what she told us on that podcast and what she told Andy on Watch What Happens Live, Giselle as an executive producer needs to be fired from this show. Because there is no way that you sat there and listened to that explanation and one decided that there's this sort of drama would not benefit the show as an executive producer or two thought that it was believable and you should monetize it. Mm. Like I'm off Robin at this point because I think karma is taking care of her better than any of us can or Bravo can. But at this point, I'm asking myself, Giselle knew all of this. How do you know this as an executive produ producer of this show? You sit with this woman and talk about the fact that her man is becoming uninterested in her potentially while she's mentally dealing with the impact of the pandemic. You know that this there is this allegation. You know it has some credibility. You never once bring it up. 
and you watch her and you participate in bringing down other people's marriages, both last season and this season. So I think we need to shift our focus from Robin being fired to honestly what is going to happen to Giselle. And I get it. I know Carlos King likes to call her the force multiplier on this show, but she has given dust to this show. And she's honestly really bad for this brand. Like she is what Kenya was before Kenya got humbled and had to come back to the show and learn how to play her position. Mm -hmm. Like you are destructive, you are toxic. And now as an EP, you are literally undermining production. Because let me tell you something. If I had worked on that montage that they showed at the end of that finale, I cannot tell you how pissed I would be. Mm. That all of that that we're doing to, in order to show some credence to your journey with this man that you are undermining literally yourself as this show is being aired. Like just from a production perspective, just from a work perspective, I don't understand how these people come back and work with either of those ladies, particularly Giselle and an executive. Like how do you sit in a producer's meeting at all and look those people in production? Uh-oh. We lost Hello. It. There we go. Oh. Yeah, I just don't know how she looks them in the face. I really don't. And... um. Yeah, I just wanted to give you the update. One has not been dismissed from that lawsuit. Thank you. I, um, I had heard already, like that same day. Because once I say something, people get in contact with me. But thank yeah, you for no, looking no. into it. Yeah, no, no. It was just a lawyer for Cop and State, which I'm like, if I'm a lawyer for Cop and State, because right now they have joint counsel. Right now, the same lawyer that's representing Cop and State is representing Juan Dixon, which I think is very interesting. But I can't imagine that that's going to go on for much longer. Why because, is that very interesting? You. Well, I think it's because if I represented Coppin State, I would be arguing that he did not perform his job duties, that the actions that he took took were outside. It's, it's a simple like you didn't obey policy. You know, the HR position where if you're a director, if you're that kind of level person that we cover from an insurance perspective, we're going to cover you to the extent that your actions fail within the scope of your duties and were in a, in compliance with policy. Mm. Him not reporting that up was not in compliance with policy. No. So why they are covering him as a key man, I don't understand, but they better get themselves away from him because all of this information is absolutely going to come into that that lawsuit. If I'm the plaintiff's counsel, baby, I am recording all of this to go towards his credibility, his worthiness, his trustworthiness, all of that. So, um, yeah, good luck to them. But um, all of this could have been avoided if Robin had just said, this is my man. I stand beside him. I don't care what y'all say about him. Mm. That's all we needed to hear. All this other stuff was immaterial. You have a great night. Go get you some food. We'll talk tomorrow. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Esquire. <laughs> Bye. Oh, my goodness. Woo! See, we got sources everywhere. So he's still a part of that lawsuit. But I'm hearing mixed things. I don't want to mention what I've heard recently in regards to this lawsuit. I just needed to play out. I needed to kind of happen because it will be interesting. It will be interesting. All right, let me get to some more callers. All right. Guys, if you're a member of the channel, I have posted a call and link on the community tab. However, I'm not going to be taking much more, m many more call callers. Okay, so let me just get to these. We have Danielle, we got In My Opinion, we got Flo Cat, and we have Brooklyn Star. Those will be our last callers of the night because it's late and I have to go finish watching 90 Day Fiance. So I can talk about it during Tuesday Takeover tomorrow at 1230 p.m. Eastern. All right, before I, I take more calls, let me just say thank you. We had a couple of super chats. Dragon Lord, thank you so much for the super chat. Dragon Lord says, Robin was squirming in her seat with Andy, and Andy in that moment was and is deciding her fate. Andy should not let her come back. No story, no contract. And I really feel like in this last episode of Potomac, they finalized her story. That whole situation at the end was like a finalization of her story, in my opinion. <laughs> like, like, in my opinion's name, backstage. <laughs> Queen, thank you so much for the super chat. She says, all I know is I will never be a mistress to a bro damn, to a broke bench NBA player. He has to have the millions in his bank account. This man is broke and still breaking hearts. Shaking my head. Look, we already know there are plenty of broke mother fathers breaking all kinds of hearts back, you know, in these regular streets. Just saying. So I get what you're saying, though. You, you're saying that that will not be you. Okay. Kara, thank you so much for the super chat. Kara says, Juan needed to needed to be exposed and karma just knocked on her door. Own it, Robin. Ooh, thank you. Thank you, Kara, for the uh, super chat. Woo! 
Ooh. Okay, let me get to some more of these calls so I can get out of here. All right, because this look, this chair is not the most comfortable. <laughs> All right, Danielle's backstage. We're going to bring her up next. What's going on, Danielle? What are your thoughts on this? On your okay, neighbor. Look, so- on your neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> no, Candace and Chris are actually my neighbors. Just like uh, Irena and Jamie are my neighbors, oh, okay. and their daughter is my neighbor. Oh, okay. Okay, so one, let me apologize to everyone. I made a slight mistake. The hotel oh. that the young lady was in is actually six minutes away from the casino. Okay. There is a casino. There is a hotel attached to casinos called Maryland Live. It's attached to the whole mall. It's a whole, but six minutes away, literally around the parking lot, basically, is where this young lady was staying, which I just pulled it up on maps and everything. And another six minutes from there is the townhouse community that they were previously staying in. Oh. And I just think that was very convenient. And it's all near BWI Airport. And it's all, it and which is odd. Oh, it's really near to the airport. Oh, yeah, it's really near the airport. Literally like an exit away. Is it a nice hotel or is it like a motel hotel? Oh, no, they put some nice hotel. They put some money into that because I actually helped with the recruitment for the casino back in the day when it was open. So they really did put some money into that. Okay. It's a whole thing around there. It's nice. Too far from my civilization. I'm over D.C. City girl, but oh. it's nice. How far is it from you? From, from D.C.? Well, it depends on... From D.C., 295 is nasty some days. So it could be anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour to get up there. Hmm. And, and do, we, do we have an, any idea... Where um, Robin lives now, where she moved to, like the area. I, that's what I cannot figure out. I can't remember. I mean, life. since we don't, since it's not public knowledge, I don't want to. Even if we did know, right. I just I wasn't sure if it was public knowledge where she currently lives. Anyways, what are your thoughts on this okay. whole situation? So, one thing: if whatever happens with this case, talking to my fellow, well, not fellow, my very close college coach friends, Juan will never work again. Ever, ever oh. with this. If this comes out to be against his favor, he will never work this lawsuit. The coach because, yeah, with the lawsuit. Because again, what parent is going to trust you with their child after this? Mm. That's one thing that coaches have to do. They have to go recruit. They have to buy in. And with that being a small HBCU, you have to get them to buy in that you got this great program going, which he doesn't because they don't really win a lot. And and I heard he doesn't do the work that he's supposed to do. This he's supposed to raise a certain amount of money and get certain games and play certain schools. He thinks Chris plays Georgetown. Isn't that what they were doing? Remember, I had, did a report like not even last year, like in 2021 when he was cheating with this woman from Canada, allegedly. Um, and I did a report where uh, Robin put in her her link tree a cash um, a cash app for the for the team. Yes. So that's not how they're supposed to raise the money, though. Oh, they're... damn. Illegal. <laughs> so Not illegal. Okay. It's more like lazy. It's uh, more lazy. Oh. Hence, okay, like if you go look at their schedule, because I always wonder this, because I'm very close with the Thompson family from Georgetown University. And I always like, why are y'all playing Coppin State? Like, you're Georgetown University. And that's when they explained to me, well, we play Coppin because we know we can beat them. Coppin plays us because we're a big name school and mm. we get paid. They pay. It's a, it's a, it's a money. It's, oh. it's business. It's all business. Okay. So all of that. Here's what I was looking for from Giorgio. Because if you guys remember from his very first video, he said he did his due diligence to check his own facts or just check some things. And he noticed that Robin and Juan were both following this young lady on Instagram and her page was private. Oh. So I needed Georgia to come follow up like, okay, so if you don't want any smoke, you don't want to upset anybody, but why are y'all following each other on social media? Why are they following each other? Is that true? That's what Giorgio said in the very first video. He said he went and looked just to peruse. I guess he was trying to check his receipts for himself for this young lady before he did the story. And he mentioned that I need Robin follows her and Juan follows this young lady. Why? Why Why is Robin following? Unless, like everyone is saying, this is a plot to make her have a job, to bring her story up, to give her a new story. I, that, that part just never made sense to me. If your page is private and you know you're sleeping with this woman's roommate, that she's in love with, why are you following her? Why are you allowing her to follow you on social media? It, mm. it doesn't make it make sense. And I needed him to also ask, did she really reach out to Giselle? 
Yeah, I, I so I asked that question too. I want to know why why did she reach out to Giselle if she did reach out to Giselle? If she reached out to her, because yeah. I felt like Giselle was just, oh, she reached out to me too. Well, Giselle, she reached out to you too. I just find it hard that she wouldn't reach out to the other ladies. Because remember, Robin said, well, I didn't know if the other ladies were going to tell my story. But that's a lie, because if you thought the other ladies were going to tell your story, you would have told it first. I'm going to tell my tea before I let you tell it. So, Robin, that was a lie. Mm. And I'm going to say this again. I've said it before. I feel like this wedding slash marriage is for the show. We realize that. Hence, why there's no adultery clause in the got dag on prenup. Yeah. Because she knows that he's going to do what he does because it's not with her. That whole wig she wore a few seasons ago. Remember, the wig was dark. I know somebody said something about the brunette. Yeah. She had a long, dark wig. And... Mims called me out on this last night. Remember a few months ago, um, there was a, a Instagram person who came forward and said that Juan had liked all her pictures. Yeah, she had long I did dark a, hair. I, I did. A, oh, I know. I did that video like six months ago, covering that, and everybody she was saying, long- "Oh, what's wrong with liking videos?" And, and fast forward to now, here we are on February sixth, Monday night, with how many people <laughs> in the building? 3,500 people on YouTube 3, and Facebook and almost 1,000 on, on TikTok. And and I'm the crazy one. But I think that goes to show, we keep talking about what does he like, the fact that she wore that long, dark wig, mm. and the fact that that late, because I went and followed her. Her page was open, so I went and followed her before she closed her page. before Because I think you had just posted your video maybe four minutes when I saw it. I probably paused you to go find her and followed her before she closed her page just because I was being nosy, but yeah. So, but yeah, but again, brunette, dark hair. Remember when, when Robin met Juan at the bar with the yeah, tag? Yeah, I on remember. Her sweater we were talking about it earlier today. With the long wig. <laughs> that's when I was like, I'm done yeah, with them. <laughs> yeah, so I think it's all just a plot. And that's all I come with today. No more notes. All TTYL. Right. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Our audience is a mess. Okay, guys, we have how many people in the building? We have over 3,500 people, but how many likes do we have? We never have the equal amount of likes. What's that about? Can we get to 2,000 likes, guys? Liking the video supports not just my channel, but other channels that cover similar pop culture news like we do that stem in music, reality TV, and so much more. But it also helps your channel because I know there's a couple of YouTubers watching in the bushes, watching, trying to get the tea and get the information. Like the video. I won't see. I won't know. It will help your channel. I'm <laughs> just saying. And guys, don't forget a new episode of our podcast came out today called Fire Robin Dixon, Kempire Radio. And when you get there, be sure to rate us five stars. I'm not going to ask you just to rate and review. Rate us five stars and what, why you love us. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. And don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Let me get to some more callers because they've been waiting patiently behind the scenes. All right. In my opinion, I'm bringing up next. What's going on in my opinion? Thoughts, thoughts, thoughts. Hey, Kim Pine, we at you again. I <laughs> know. Long time no see. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to tell you, Danielle, half of it right and half of it wrong. Okay. They're both following the friend that came to the hotel. It's oh, not okay. Thank following you. Robin. Everybody's following the friend that came to the hotel. And okay. he said that's how he knew the friend was the friend that came to the hotel because he did a fact check. Okay. okay. So you. this case is one of those cases where admit what you can't deny, deny what you can't admit. Now, in the proof, it showed that she sent she sent the email to Robin. It didn't show that she sent it to Giselle. But it did show that she sent because it had Robin email at the top. Mm-hmm. It had Robin something, a Gmail, whatever. Anyway, had the proof that she sent it to Robin. She said she was sending it to Robin to let her know what was going on in case he had lied to her because she felt uncomfortable after the friend came and exposed himself. Mm-hmm. Robin then sent her a message back, said, thank you, and I, I, I understand. Yeah. Okay, so she thought like, okay, maybe, you know, here, here, I'm going to, you know, get this to Giorgio because he's in the DMV area. Mm. He'll check it out and see what's going on. But when the store blew up, she had to admit what she couldn't deny mm. and deny what she couldn't admit. But the problem is, when you don't get your information straight, you get caught up in lies. Okay? So the girl said she ain't asked for $4,000 from Zell because they can't get Zell. Here's my thing. First of all, if you're going to tell a lie, make sure you can bag that lie up. And then I was wondering why she asked for four thousand dollars. Usually, when people are storing you for money, they ask for some big amounts of money. Why she asked for? 
That's all Robin could afford four thousand dollars. That's the. That check ain't that big. That's all she could afford with the four thousand dollars. With the hats. <laughs> I don't even think she can afford that, but that's what she said. Okay. It's a shame. Let me tell you something. I ain't gonna never root for nobody that lose. But if it was somebody that I wish would have kept their mouth shut, it's definitely Robin. Like, you're not smart enough to try to get in these streets and play the games with people. Don't even play. Yeah. Don't put your cards in there. Cause you're looking crazy in these streets. Yeah, she is. Huh. And Paul, let me tell you something. One need to stay off Instagram. <laughs> didn't he delete that that original Instagram that we reported? I gotta go back and watch my own video because when we reported on that Instagram uh, woman um, speaking out, but that that's who Giselle should have been calling the sneaky link, <laughs> <laughs> right? And not Chris Bassett. Lord have mercy. All right, all right. In my opinion, have a Thank good you. night, you too. Have a good night. Bye. <laughs> Ooh, okay, I think some of you are asking about Kempai Radio. Kempai Radio is available on all major podcast platforms, be it the Apple, be it the Spotify, be it um, Google, um, Audible. We're on all of the platforms. But if you're looking for a direct link, head on over to KempaiRadio.com for the link tree and all the details there. The new episode came out earlier today. All right. <sighs> all right, Brooklyn Star is backstage. We're going to bring Brooklyn Star up next. What's going on, Brooklyn Star? Hey, Kempai, how are you? I'm well, how are you? I'm good. I'm just sneaking off from the dinner table. <laughs> uh, were you guys having dinner? And you still from the dinner? No, I almost burned some food on the grill because I just want to think about this. Like this has been playing in my head since you've been live. Okay, <laughs> we automatically assume that Juan was mad. Um, I think Juan was mad um, when they were, um, Robin called them because I think Karen <laughs> exposed a new chick that Robin didn't know about. I think Robin was ready for this information and not prepared for the blonde information. I think that's where the real tea's at, mm. this blonde. Because I think she was all prepared and ready, like, you know, arms for thinking, oh, this chick from Canada, not realizing, nope, Karen knew some other tea. Yeah. And the other ladies did nod their heads. I think Ashley and Wendy, that this young lady was also in their DMs. Oh. So I want to know if the picture or whoever this lady is matches up with who Robin has in Canada. Or is it the blonde? Yeah. That's all I'm saying. I, I was I'm wondering the same thing. Yeah, I'm as confused as Juan has Robin right now. I'm just, it's just making me think way too much. But I think the real tea is with the other woman. And what if she's like a person that works at the school with them or something? I don't know. Well, it's, it's damn, not, no, you did not drop about. that because I've been, look, I've been hitting at that part. I heard yeah. I heard some things. Robin. Yeah, I'm thinking there's more to it. I think this is a distraction, the chick in Canada. Okay. I think the real tea is with the miss why why haven't the internet streets found this mystery blonde in Georgetown? Karen knows. Somebody else has to know. I want to know. And Karen just recently said she has receipts. And then you saw yeah. on Watch What Happens Live, Robin was like, Well, K Karen knows I have receipts too. No, they're gonna have to bring Robin on one time. Cut her pain half and just like bring her back so she can spill <laughs> because I want to know. I want to know so bad. It's like about the other lady. I don't care about this chick. It's going to come out. No it might come out before. the before. I, I did see someone say that they're going to start filming pretty soon and maybe because how everything's happening now. I don't know. Do you want Robin to come back for this to play out? You did just say you kind of do. Just if they're going to tell me who the blonde is because <laughs> honestly, the girl in Canada, it don't make any sense. I'm not coming there in there for an NFL player and settling for one. Okay, like, bye. Goodbye. <laughs> That's not even worth me getting on that flight. Okay. Um, no, something's not adding up. No, thank you. He's cute, but no, thank you. Mm -mm, no, I'm okay. good. All right. All right, Brooklyn Star. Thank you so much. <laughs> Take care. Bye. All right. Shout out to everyone that tried to call in. I know some of you did try to call in and then you were blocked because we had so many people backstage. But look, we go live all the time. And sometimes we have surprise lives. We had a surprise live on Friday night. Well, not Friday night, Friday afternoon. And then we have, of course, our Tuesday takeover tomorrow. So we will probably be talking more about this situation along with the Grammys, along with 90 Day Fiance, Family Karma. Um, we got to talk about Harlem on, on Prime. So there are a few things that we cover on Tuesday Takeover. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, be sure to subscribe. I did have a couple of Super Chats that I did want to say thank you for. Again, thank you to Giorgio Says. He had this exclusive interview on his YouTube channel by the same name, Giorgio Says. As always, we cite our sources here on the channel. 
Let me just say thank you. Uh, Candace, thank you so much for another super chat. Candace says, Coppin's record is horrible and has been for years. I'm surprised Juan hasn't already been fired. Okay. Um, Shan, thank you so much for the super chat. Shan says, Robin will not be fired because even the Shade Room and TMZ are reporting on this. TMZ is reporting on this. Hashtag Starless Robin has made it. TMZ is reporting on this? Did they just report on this, Shan? I got to go check. They probably got half the story when we got all the tea. When we got all the tea, right? Come on, TikTok. We got all the tea. Thank you guys on TikTok that are tapping your screens and for the gifts. Thank you to our moderators. I know the moderators, you guys have been here for almost two hours as well. I'm going to go. Thank you guys. Let me just make sure I got all the super chats because y'all get at me when when I don't read your super chat. And I apologize. I try to get to all the super chats, but I'm I'm enge- I'm the engineer. I'm the host. I'm the producer and the talent. Okay. Um. Um, Dragon Lord, I did read your super chat earlier. I'll post it up again so you can see. I did re- read your, he says, Robin was squirming in her seat with Andy, and Andy in the moment was and is deciding her fate. Andy should not let her come back. No story, no contract. Bye, Robin. Look, bye, Robin. Um, Julie, thank you so much for the super chat. Julie says, just wanted to monetarily support your channel, as always. Thank you, Julie. We appreciate it. And I'm sure I will see you tomorrow. You don't have to send a super chat tomorrow, but I'm sure I'll see you tomorrow for our Tuesday takeover. Again, thank you to the King's Guards, aka our moderators. We could not do this without them. Don't forget to support our sponsors, guys, as well. The coldest water bottle, you can get a coldest water bottle with a discount of 10% off if you use the discount code KEMP10. All right. So well, hold on. I had to take a sip. Um, <laughs> oh, wait, let me switch to let me switch out of the caller situation here. There we go. There we go. Um, and if you the holidays, Valentine's Day is next week, guys. Kempire 25 for $25 off roseforever.com. Go get you something. OK, anyways, guys, we appreciate you supporting us any way that you can. And that's also by sharing this video, liking this video. Let's get to 2000 likes. We're almost there. Let's get to 2000 likes. Thank you to everyone in the chat. Thank you to our moderators. Thank you to our uh, channel members. We appreciate you guys. Shout out to everyone sending gifts on TikTok as well and for tapping your screens. We could not do this without you as well. Elle Singleton, thank you so much for the super chat. She says, uh, just because you're the, thank you, Elle Singleton, my Taurus sister there. Thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. I have a lot to talk about tomorrow in regards to the Grammys. So stay tuned for that. Tuesday takeover tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. Eastern. Let's get out of here. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. This is what we do. We play a little music and then we get out of here. So we're going to play a little music and then we're going to wrap this show up. All right. Let's get out of here. Let me mute this. Sippin' Hennessy, President of Sweet, lookin' like a young Barack Obama Skippin' to the B, giving hella heat, I'ma need a C, just to count up all these dots and commas I think it's evident, I'm the better man, I'm the jam, I'ma have you crushin' like a four-wheel monster Who you know who lookin' like this, for real, who you know who lookin' like this? Uh, baby, baby, won't you listen to me, I got that flavor, I know you're dying to feed I ain't no dancer, just got some hip in my feet, now throw your hands up I got the fuse, you make a fire, I'll add the fuel, follow my lead it. just watch the shoes, gotta turn the heat up, to get this cool. Sippin' Chardonnay on the balcony, looking like a young Elvis Presley I've been overseas, I've been underneath, I ain't never seen nothing like a prison 12 o'clock I don't know nobody looking like that, I don't know nobody looking like that I don't know nobody looking like that, I don't know nobody looking like that uh, Baby, baby, won't you listen to me? I got that flavor, I know you're dying to feed I ain't no dancer, just got some hip in my feet Now throw your hands